Hey guys, it's Nick the Booksmith. Welcome back, welcome back. I figured I am not done with anything, uh, but if I didn't turn on the camera and record something, then nothing would ever be recorded. It's been over two weeks, I think. And I'm gonna sound like a broken record, but I've been sick, fever, every, the whole nine. So I won't get into the boring details, just, yeah, anyway. It was an ordeal. So just a couple of updates. The challenge is nearly coming to its completion and hopefully my book will be ready. Yeah, so I guess I could show it to you as it is just in case it never gets finished. Oh, that's sad. Don't say that, Nick. That's not very positive, is it? It isn't very fancy, but it wasn't going to be fancy to begin with. I still have this little panel here that I need to put something there and I haven't come to a conclusion about what that should be. <laughs> so nothing's there. But it is just a plain brown, albeit velvety, book cloth with this envelope flap that keeps it closed. There's a magnet hidden underneath that attaches to these little metal studs that are embedded in the cover. Kind of a medieval look almost, I would say. On the inside, it's not fancy at all, but that's kind of me. <laughs> that was the whole point, right? I put some things in here that I, that I love, but as I wasn't feeling well, it just got simpler and simpler and simpler because I didn't have the energy to, to fill it with anything extravagant. But there's some beautiful papers in here. And I put a title page. There's a lot of paper in here. But some of the lino cut carving stamps that I did. Some quotes and stanzas from poetry. There's another of the lino cuts. There's a lot of blank pages. This is the dragon poem that I wrote. And here at the bottom is, well, it's a dragon. It's the Laidly Worm from a fairy tale book. Get all that stuff out of the way. I can't hold it up and turn pages at the same time. There's not, like I said, there's not a lot in here really. I just wanted blank pages. Although I did add some random interest here and there with some printed or vintage pages. I love him. I love him. The owl with glasses and a candlestick in his books. I just love that. So cool. But you guys know me. I am not frilly or fluffy or lacy or anything of that nature. This is the Raven by Poe that I've put in almost the very center of the book. It's a ledger page. It's notebook paper. I thought that was kind of a cool graphic. A dragonfly and some wild irises. And there's a quote from Victor Hugo that says, melancholy is the pleasure of being sad. I thought that was brilliant a page from an old music book, sheet music book. It's really simple, probably too simple, but that's okay. There's some Poe quotes in there. The cool moth. Thought he was neat. And just a random number code. <laughs> And there's the back. But what I like about this book is that it, it closes. However, it's not going to be one of those books to add a lot of excess paper and ephemera and bulk to. This is strictly a writer's book. And I will finish it. I just have to put something here, but I don't know what. So what do you do when you don't know what to do next? You put it away. That's what I do. I put it away and I start a whole new project. <laughs> so I'm making these little teeny winky binky tiny books. 
And why am I doing that, you ask? Well, that will be the next video. How's that? So if we stack them all up. Look how cute they are. Isn't that cute? Anyway, I printed out a page of little tiny book covers that I put together in Photoshop. And all I'm doing is folding the cover in my phone folder. And you may hear the cat. She thinks she's starving already. I wish cats could tell time, although they would deny it if they could, I'm sure. But it's like three hours before she normally gets fed for dinner. And she has dry food, so it's not like she's starving. But she likes her dinner food. So she starts uh, grouching. There she is, she's walking in here. She starts grouching at me sometimes by 11 o'clock in the morning. And then she'll get mad. The quick little bark, which is fun. Uh, the point to the story is, if you hear an angry cat, it's not a starving angry cat, she's just being a jerk. So I take a knitting needle and I am just putting a little curve in the spine just because I think it makes it look a little more authentic. It makes it, you know, have the little curve in it. I don't know. Sometimes I can be a stickler for things that are absolutely unnecessary. And then I can be oblivious to things that are strategically important and pertinent. Calm it down, man. Just calm it down. Okay. I got a few of these little covers ready to rock and roll. And then there are different ways that I fill them. And you've probably seen different ways on the interwebs. And you might have your own favorite way of filling them. And I'm looking for... Well, it's just, it was an old book that was falling apart. I found in the bin... The recycle bin and of course this is for the books that are meant to open and then I just stack them up grab a couple clips oh and by the way those of you that have a Dollar Tree store near you these are in the crafts section, and there's six of them for a buck. So, go get some, man. This is a couple of pieces of scrap chipboard. I like that. And I just take a little bit of glue and mush that into all those little edges. And then I will grab a piece of cheesecloth. This is a lot of work for little teeny teeny tiny books. That's why not all of them are going to open because this would be ridiculous. I'm just going to leave a little overhang, just like I would on a full-size book. And then I'll run another little layer of glue just to embed the cheesecloth. And I'll let that dry. So if this is dry, And how many pages are here? I have no clue. None. None, none. But it's about, I don't know, four millimeters thick. But I don't have to make all of these. I have about a hundred covers here and that's just not gonna happen. Even as ambitious as this little project is turning out to be, I won't 
make a hundred books. All right. I'm going to mark how tall I want it. And then instead of trying to cut it with scissors or anything like that, I use my handy dandy little saw and I will do it right here because you can't see my my tiny miter box that's behind me on the table. But I just saw through it and it makes a much cleaner cut. Straighter too, because I can be really, really, really not even, not even remotely even. Makes it pretty decent cut. I also took a piece of cardstock. You can ask me why I thought I should do this. I really can't tell you the reasoning behind it. This video is going to be all over the place. I'm just, you probably already know that. <laughs> you figured that out. You've got my number because I'm all over the place today. I'm very scattered today. So on a couple of these, I added a piece of thick cardstock to the, just to beef up the cover. Just, I think I did it just to see what it would look like. It, I don't, it's not like it's a necessary thing. It's very unnecessary actually, but I think I just wanted to see what it looked like. And to glue it in, I put glue to the edge of the spine and then all the way out. Close it down on the front and the back. Just make sure that it's centered in the middle. And I take a couple of pieces of chipboard and I sandwich them, leaving the spine sticking out a little bit and give that a good clamping. A good clamping? I'm not exactly sure what a bad clamping is, but and then I'll just let it dry. And that's, that is that. Only 90 more to go, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, that probably won't happen. So those of you that have made books or are in the process of making books and want to submit those, uh, do so at your leisure until the end of the month at the email that's listed in the description box. All right, so if you want to make some of these little books, you're welcome to go grab that. Oh, it's thundering outside, so if you hear rumble bumbles, that's what it is. So you want to make some little miniature books for the, the, the mystery project that I'm, that I'm starting, then feel free to go download that page and print these out. The, the pages on the inside are three quarters of an inch wide by a little over an inch tall. So like an inch and a sixteenth tall. The book covers will print on A4 or U.S. letter paper. Everybody's printer may print out a slightly different size just because some computer printer drivers will compress the image before it prints it. Some do not. You'll just have to measure. You, you'll figure it out. It's not rocket surgery, right? So go make some books, make a hundred, and then send them to me so I don't have to make all these. <laughs> all right, guys, it was fun being with you at least for a few minutes today, and I hope everybody is doing well. I hope everybody is happy and healthy and enjoying your summer and or winter, depending on your hemisphere. And I will see you all really, really soon in the next video. Bye, guys!